Dale, Irapstein of Linden Associates with your metals market update. And this update is for Thursday. And we are now at the 9th of January, 2020. And we're just after 4.30 p.m. Central Time. Well, as you can see, a down day in the copper market, the silver market, the gold market, platinum market was up a little bit. So what we've got here is still the reaction from yesterday when a detente, if you will, of types has gone off between Iran itself and the U.S. That's the way that I'll call it. A toning down, everybody stepped back from a brink. The word today that we heard was that the uh, Ukrainian plane that crashed uh, when the missile strikes went off may have been, and I'm not accusing it because I don't know the facts, but a lot of the news uh, media, they're saying that it appears to have been a Russian missile launched out of Baghdad that hit the plane, and my God, I'm going to ask one key question. If you're launching missile, missiles, why is a plane going up and why are you allowing that? I mean, I, I flew planes myself, so I, I have to ask that question. I don't get it, and there's got to be more to this than is there, but uh, it certainly appears as though that is what uh, the market is leading to. But in any case, we're dropping down and have dropped down in the metals. And the question is, when is enough enough? That's what you're going to be asking. So let's get to the market. When we look at a weekly chart of closes, even though the gold market is reversed, on a closing basis, you're still up $1.90. Now, remember what I'm saying. I know the market took off on Tuesday night when the missiles were sailing. I know the market went over $1,600, but on a smooth basis of just closes, this is still the best close that we've had. That says a lot. When you look at the chart, you know that what I was pointing out to you recently was that you had a gap in the chart, and the question from this day, do you gap higher again and get what's called a breakaway gap, or does the market make an attempt to fill the gap that's left through there, and what it ended up doing is filling the gap. So I'm still going to ask the question, when is enough enough? Where's the support levels coming into the market? What we've got right now is a market that's in a churn. And what I define as a churn is when a market steps out after you get a big rally in a market and it starts spinning around, which is a form of consolidation. The stock market has been doing that. And I know you're going to hear on financial TV, oh, it's at new all-time highs. It is, but it hasn't broken out of that area. That's the point that I'm getting at. In the gold, when we look at moving averages, the 18-day average is now in a race to get to prices. It's advancing at the tune of about five, five to $7 a day on average when you look at it right now. So tonight, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, we're in the low 15, 20 area, something in, in that general zone. And the question is, is, is the price going to reach down to that or is it going to fall short of it? you still have an upside bias as long as you're over these two moving averages. When we look at Bollinger Bands, what they did is the market on the initial breakout from right here, the sideways action, and I'm sure you see that. When you broke out, you typically get overbought. That's not a problem. And then pulling back and forth within it, and this is the reach down. So it's not going to be easy. You're going to need something, some, some, impetus to get gold back up over this high that I don't see on the horizon. Could be impeachment of the president. Uh, it could be the Chinese-U.S. deal falls apart. I mean, there's so many things I don't know. But that it's going to take an event. It could be Iran-U.S. going at it again. Whatever it's going to do, it's going to do. But it's, I, we don't know what that event is yet. Momentum is diverting from this overall trend. It's down. You've lost the embedded reading, which often leads to price making a run at the 18-day average. Now, you said the word often, not always. And that is because really strong bull markets will break down and they don't seem to reach right for it. Markets that have gotten too high, like this may have, often do that. So where are you? I still think you've stepped out of the uptrend. You're in a corrective mode. That's my definition of it. When we come over here to GLD, it's not going to be an awful lot different. You're going to see that this market peaked out. The momentum today stepped in, but it didn't lose the embedded reading. It still has both numbers, as you can see here, over 80. So that's important to me because this market is maybe being one that wasn't able to be pulled down. And you get a good, strong close tomorrow, you might keep that reading. 
on the beginning of the day tomorrow because the range today was down and the market, if we take a look, let me step over here, it's easier for me. At 146.03, you didn't close right on the day's lows or anything, you closed sort of midway in the range. It's not gonna help me try to figure out are we gonna be able to keep the embedded reading or not? Sometimes you get, if you close it the day's high and you're near that, you can say, okay, it corrected, but it looks like it's gonna to try to pick up. I don't have that edge. In the gold-silver ratio, this favors the gold market. And that's because the market's been holding the 18-day average. It did test it. You can see it got through it, came back and tested it, and now the market hasn't backed off back under this. So until you get back under that last break low, this says that gold is stronger than silver. And when we look at the mining stocks, you can see another thing, and I'll get to the silver with you in a minute here. But you've got the lower lows, lower highs. Now, if we go, you can see yesterday you were fighting your battle. You slid through the 18-day average. You're continuing. I think this market will have a hard time getting much under the 100-day average. And you're holding fairly well the general zone here if you take a look of the 18-day uh, average. You did close it closer to the day's low, so going home, the bears have grabbed control of these markets. When I say that I'm looking for support, that doesn't mean I'm bullish. I've, I'm in the bear camp now. Lower highs, lower lows in both markets here under the 18-day average and momentum pointing down. I have nothing to be friendly about. The risk in going short, though, is very large, I'm not comfortable with it. In the silver market, Again, like the extension that we saw in the gold to the upside off the missile strikes, the market has now broken through these lows. So you've got the higher, high, lower, low. Pretty strong support, at least I see it, in the 1771 area, the combination of the 100-day average and the 18. Now, there's something else that's likely to happen tomorrow. Barring a complete crash in silver, if the silver market gets any weekend evening up here, or bottom fishing, you may well see this 18-day average get over the 100. It doesn't have the same impact that it would if momentum were starting or coming from an up zone. Momentum is trying to drop on you is the problem right here. And even if you have a big update, you can't regain the embedded reading. And the reason you can't get it back is you lost it on Wednesday and you confirmed it being lost today. So this still puts into play that 1770 zone. In the copper market, it's crystal clear, the battleground is the 18-day average of closes. At going home prices, the market closed 280.20, so it's under the 18-day average. The swing line is up, and momentum has gone flat on you. This market's, I think, waiting to see USMCA deal, possibly. It's waiting to see the Chinese trade deal. Impeachment's a given it's going to happen. It's only a question of when Ms. Pelosi, the Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives, decides it's in her best interest to deliver the articles. We'll see. In the platinum, the market has got lower highs, lower lows. Okay, and you got down today to what number? Let's take a look at yesterday's action. You hadn't hit the 18-day average. You had a reading that had gotten embedded, lost it. It puts into play the possibility, the likelihood, not the word always, the likelihood that price is going to make a run at the 18-day average. Price today reached down to 952.5, hit that number, and that's where I think the shorts, those that were playing for that move, came out of the market because you came back and closed on the day from that low nearly $17 higher than that 18-day average and $20 off the low. And need I tell you the market that just stays super strong no matter what it wants to do, but it did a very good thing today. What it did is it was able to get back in here and on the close, it closed 260.40 under, underneath the upper Bollinger Band. So you're not getting the excessive numbers where you can get a big break. What else? You're starting to embed again. If you take a look, the red and the blue numbers are both over 80. They were both over 80 yesterday, not the day before. Tomorrow's a key day for the market. You're in a zone where the market is stalling. That's all that it is. If it decides to embed, I don't know the price. Here's what you know going home. Practically everybody that is short, practically, is wrong this market. And the reason is, while you're down today a dollar, you're a dollar off the all-time high close, only between this area that I'm pointing at do any shorts have profit. Anybody that's held on to positions from lower time zones, they're in trouble. 
And the question is, good numbers going in tomorrow. What if you get really strong jobs data? Europe, at least I saw their numbers today, their jobs data didn't get bad. Germany had a better manufacturing sector number. And the question is, markets like these, they're telling you, they're looking at the market, and there's so many analysts that think EMAs, which are emerging markets, are gonna do better. If world economies do better, uh, Palladium's a world metal. It's not a US metal, it's a, it's a world metal. You've got a lot of people caught short. It's not a thing that you want to be a hero on. I put out my gold report yesterday. Now, I'm very, very close to letting my current subscribers see the next week what the ETF spider reports are going to look like. So if you're a current paid subscriber of me, believe me, you're going to be able to get to look free at the ETF spider uh, report that's coming out. I'm really excited about it. But in my Gold report, I did the price counts, the seasonal charts, I do the weekly, the daily charts, and I'm giving you an analysis as to where I think the correction can carry to. Not, then you'll hear from me in my longer term bullish or bearish, why am I that way, and I want you to take a look at it. How do you see it? Well, you go to our website, under the word research, you see metals report, click on it, and away you go. Paid subscribers to any of my research or any of our funded trading accounts have totally free access as I keep putting out more and more reports. The general public does not. And the reason is there's a value to these reports. You get to see a certain amount of them free, then you can decide you want to become one of our subscribers, have an account with us, what do you want to do? I hope you like what you see. It's an awful lot of work. This report's about 15 minutes long in a video. I think I really cover a lot of the market. I'm Ira Epstein. You have a good day, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.